is Robert Broom from DC Media Group. I'm here with Craig Aaron from Free Press. Um, we're here to talk about the FCC net neutrality issue. So, can you give us a quick summary as to leading up to this and where we're at here today? Sure. Well, uh, I'm so excited to be here at this encampment. It's, I think it's really making a huge difference in pressuring uh, the people inside this building to do the right thing. Uh, I've been fighting just about every day for net neutrality. Uh, for close to a decade now uh, as part of Free Press and SaveTheInternet.com and I think there is more attention and enthusiasm on this issue in the past two weeks than we've had at any time. And uh, there, there, there's still a lot more to do, but the people out here and the millions of people who are taking action across the country are, are definitely being heard and are getting the attention of the Federal Communications Commission. They are not used to the broad American public paying attention to what they do here, and when people start paying attention and start calling and start sending in letters and start camping outside the FCC, uh, it really makes a tremendous difference. And I think we've seen that in them furiously rewriting this item they're going to vote on this week up to the last minute, uh, in them keeping everything open for public comment far longer than they ever do, in FCC staff taking to Twitter and places like that to actually face the music and hear questions from the public. Uh, their phones are ringing off the hook inside, so much so that they're trying to get people to send email because they actually can't do their regular business. Uh, and that's exactly the kind of message we want to send because net neutrality and the free and open internet is just that important. So the things that everybody's doing, I think, are making a tremendous difference. I hope everyone will keep doing them. I hope as many people as possible, especially here in Washington, D.C., Maryland, and Virginia, will come out on Thursday morning at 9 a.m., come before you go to work, uh, make that extra trip. We're going to do a big rally and protest right out here outside the FCC uh, and make sure that these public voices can't be ignored. Okay, so... So you monitored today's open forum on Twitter. What did you think of the responses of the advisor so, for look, first Wheeler? First of all, I do want to give credit to the FCC because it's not every FCC that actually goes out and talks to the public. And right. even if it's just via Twitter, I think they deserve a lot of credit for at least engaging in the discussion while it still matters, before the decisions have been made. You know, that said, I think there's still a lot we don't know about what they're voting on. I think that... They're improving this order, they are asking better questions about what we should do, but their tentative conclusions, the things that they're saying to people, this is what we want to do, is still the wrong thing. It's not real net neutrality, it's it's still this flawed approach that either is going to be thrown out in court, uh, if they try to enforce it, or will never be enforced. And if they go this route, they're not going to stop website blocking, they're not going to stop discrimination, and they are going to permit a two-lane internet where, you know, the fast lane, we know, that's going to be reserved for the 1%. It's the 99% who are going to be stuck on the slow road and never have an opportunity to get that fast lane. No matter how many good their ideas are, no matter what their new business is, no matter what they're trying to organize, they're never going to have the same opportunity as the biggest companies today to get that preferred or preferential service. That's never the way the internet has worked. It would fundamentally break the internet uh, and, and, and really change the way it's worked, take away this thing that really has been an unrivaled environment for free speech for democratic participation and for economic innovation and put it in the hands of just a few big companies. And those companies are the ones writing to the FCC telling them not to do it. Comcast, Verizon, AT&T, the big cable lobby, the big phone lobby. Those are the people who are writing. They're not sleeping out here. They're writing, say, don't do this, we'll sue you, we'll do all these things. We need the people in this building to actually listen to the public, actually stand up for them and for that free and open internet. We need a counterweight to those big companies, not somebody doing their bidding. Hey, Craig, I have tremendous respect for Free Press. You guys did a great job with the private manning trial. Um, with this situation here, if Wheeler puts together a Trojan horse with loopholes, you know, have you guys worked out any kind of plan going forward beyond well, you know, Thursday? The, the good news is we've got great momentum. And what we have to do, if this fight just happens here inside the Beltway, we're probably going to lose. They've got a lot of lobbyists. They spend a lot of money. But if we can actually, as we've seen start to happen over these last few weeks, get people out across the country actually talking about this, asking their legislators questions, doing events where they live, popping up all over the country, that's how social change ultimately happens. It's when those in power 
realize they have a lot more to lose by going against the public interest than sticking with these big corporate interests. I think this net neutrality fight is a really great opportunity to prove that, and we're certainly going to be throwing all of our resources, all of our organizing energy to support people who want to do that all across the country. The vote this week is incredibly important, but it's just the first step. There's going to be at least through September a process here at the FCC before there's a final vote. I'd be surprised if the true final vote happens until the end of the year. So we have time to really get organized, build an even bigger movement, and one they truly won't be able to ignore. I think that possibility is very real, and it, you know, it's thanks to you know a lot of people waking up to this issue and a lot of people really being inspired by people who have come out here and are you know. Giving up, occupying space, actually being present all the time and saying we're paying attention. That has not happened at an agency like the FCC before, and it makes a huge difference. Okay. This is Robert Brown from DC Meeting Group. Thank you, Craig Evan from Free Press. Awesome.